Hey, fourth and fifth grade, happy Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed yesterday where you got to take a little bit of a brain break and just do a little bit of a review on fractions. It's gonna be super important that you continue to go back and review things that you've already learned, that you already know, just to make sure that they are in your brain for the long run. So this is our last week of official math lessons. Next week is the last week of school, and so we are going to be doing more fun activities. I have some summer math activities that we're going to be doing next week. You're not going to be having math videos every day. It's just going to be more relaxed. We're going to have theme days, and we're going to have a lot of fun on that last week of school. Okay, guys? So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, I'm super excited, actually, about the rest of this week with our last little bit of math because this chapter really is something that you need to know how to do, okay? So we're gonna be looking at percents of a number today. And actually tomorrow, um, if we get as far today as I hope so, tomorrow we're gonna be looking at sales tax. So you know that when you go to the grocery store and you see um, a package of bread and maybe some muffins and some apples, and you see that all of those things together, let's say, cost $11. Well, you know that you can't go to the cash register and just give them $11 because you have sales tax, okay? You have an extra amount of money that you're going to need to give the cashier for your taxes, okay? And it's like that on anything you buy. It's not just groceries. If you buy furniture, you're gonna have taxes. If you buy a house, <laughs> you've got taxes. So it's really important that you guys understand this concept because this is absolutely something that you're gonna be using in your everyday life. So to get us started, guys, Maggie's laying on my math book, so excuse me, hold on just a second, okay. So we are on chapter 10, lesson three today. And if you want to, please go ahead and open up your textbook to page 116. And we're gonna read through some of this together. And then we're gonna be doing some practice as well. So here is page 116. Okay, so let's go ahead and read this together. And I want you to understand a couple of things. If you look at this bar model, we are going to be looking at a part whole bar model, which is something that we've been looking at all year. And I'm gonna show you what the holes are and what the parts are as we go through. So let's read the problem. It says, of the 400 seats on an airplane, 80% of the seats are in the economy class cabin. How many seats are in the economy class cabin? All right, I'm gonna put my book down so that we can go through both of these methods together, okay? But before I do, let's look at what she says because this helps us. 100% of the seats is the total number of seats. So we have 40 seats on the plane. So basically, if I have 400 people on the plane, is my plane 100% full? Yeah, it is, okay? So... That being said, your 400 seats is your total amount on your airplane, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to write 400. And I want you guys to go ahead and get your whiteboard and I want you to do these along with me, okay? Now, I know that 80% of the seats are economy class, okay? Now, 80% is a smaller amount than 100%, right? Because I have some seats like first class, I have some seats like business class, okay? Economy class on a plane is basically when you just buy a regular old ticket and you're just sitting there with everybody and you've got smaller seats. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, 400 seats is your whole, all right? Just as a quick reminder. The seats for economy class and other classes and all of it, okay? Now, let's look at method one. Follow along in your textbook if you need to, all right? Let's go ahead and model this with a bar model, okay? 
So we have 400 seats as 100% full, okay? And we are going to use something called the unitary method to find the answer. Everybody say unitary. Awesome. Now that just means units. We're going to split this up into units, okay? Now, I am going to split this up into 10 sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I had to add one there, and 10. Let me just double check. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good, good. Okay, now, I know, now let me show you this. The reason I put 10 here is because if I have 10 times 10, what does that give me? That gives me 100%, okay? So even though, let me write it like this, even though it is 400 seats, this is also showing 100%, okay? So I had to figure out how to divide my 100%, okay, don't look at the 400, so that I could easily figure out how much 80% would be. And I know that 10 times 10 is 100, so that's why I split this up into 10 boxes. All right, so 100% is 400 seats. Now I've gotta figure out what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight seats are. This shows 80%. However, I don't know how many units that is. I don't know how many seats that is. So the first thing I have to do is I have to figure out how much is one unit okay, or 1% of this, okay? So 1%, one, let me highlight it in more, 1% of this is going to be 400, your 400 seats, and you are gonna divide that by your 100, okay, or your 100%. Now, how many seats did that give you? That gave you four seats, right? Okay, now I know that this one, boop, 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 represents four, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I have to figure out how much those are, all of them together. These units here that are 80%. So I am gonna figure out 80%, <coughs> Woo, sorry guys, 80% equals your 80 times, how much are each of these worth? Four, good, so do 80 times four on your whiteboard and you should get this, 320. So there are 320 seats in the economy class cabin. Now this is one way of solving it and figuring it out, but there's another method that I wanna show you as well. So let's take a look at that. Method two, 80% of the seats, so let's write this on our board together, 80% of the seats equals 80% of 400. To be honest, I kind of like this way a little bit more. So 80% of 400, because it's 400 seats that are 100%, that's the total, okay? So in order to figure this out, I'm just gonna need to put 80 over 100, all right? And then I'm going to multiply it by my total amount of seats, which is 400. And when I do that, I'm going to get 320.
okay? So that's a quicker way to be able to get this answer, all right? We're gonna practice with this a bunch more today. Let's go ahead and open up our textbook. Let's flip the page to 107, teen, <laughs> 117, sorry. It's gonna look something like this. You have got a giraffe on it, okay? All right, let's go ahead and read number one together. It says, Lily had $800. We're gonna do the bar model method for this one, okay? All right, just because that's what it is wanting us to do and we'll just fill in. Oops, let me move this over a bit, guys. All right. And we'll just fill in the green spots here. She spent 20% of her money. How much did she spend? Okay, well, all of this is $800, which is 100% of my money. Okay, how many boxes do I split this up into? Who remembers? Good, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, nine, I do that every time, and 10, okay? All right, now I've got to figure out Twenty percent of her money. So if all of this is a hundred, two of them is going to be twenty percent. Okay. Now I am going to take my one hundred percent, and I'm going to realize that that is my eight hundred dollars. Do you guys see that? Okay. Now I've got to figure out what one of these equals. So who remembers how to do that? Good, I'm gonna take 800, I'm gonna divide it by my 100%, okay, and what does that give me? How much money? Just $8, right? Okay, so I have figured out what 1% is. Now I need to figure out what 20% is. So I'm gonna take my 20%, And that's going to be my 20 times my $8. And what do you get when you multiply your 20 times your eight? Good, $160. So Lily spent $160. All right, let's take a look at number two. One Sunday, 800 people visited the zoo. Ooh, ah, run away marker lid, hold on. All right. Total number of visitors. Eight hundred. Okay. Now it says seventy-five percent of the visitors were children. So 75% of visitors, okay, were children. How many children visited the zoo on that day? Well, I'm not sure. So what I need to do is I need to take my 75% and I'm going to multiply it by my total, which was how much? Good, 800. Go ahead and multiply that. Now, you could do it this way or you could say it like this, 75 over 100. Okay, because that's your percent that you know over your 100% times your 800 people that were at the zoo. And you should get what? Pause the video and try that out. Okay, did you get 600? If not, go back and take a look to see how we get 600, okay? The biggest thing that you need to remember for one and two that we just did is that you are finding a part of a whole, okay? The whole given is typically in a dollar form here, okay? Or a total amount of people, 800. It was 800 on both. That was our total for both of them, okay? So 
You're gonna find a part of a whole given its percent and the whole, okay? In number one, we use the unitary method. And in number two, we use a multiplication method, okay? You can use either method. It depends on which one you prefer, whether it's the unitary method or the multiplication method. It doesn't matter, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Flip your page to 118. I'd like for you to pause the video and read through all of this and match all the numbers together with the bar models and see where the numbers come from. Then all I want you to do today for guided practice, okay, for independent practice, I should say, sorry, is I want you to try page 119 on your own, okay? So here's 119, pause the video and then come back and make sure you've got 119 right. If this is something that you wanna do with me today, go ahead and send me an email and we can work on this together, all right? Pause the video and give it a try. All right, awesome job. So here are your answers for page 119. Double check that you have those right, okay? And if not, like I said, we can do some together, okay? No big deal. All right, guys, we're gonna continue um, with percents tomorrow. We're gonna be looking at real world problems. So when you're really gonna be needing percents, okay? All right, guys, see you tomorrow.